So it says a uh, neutron star of some mass. Uh, let me write down, give it a symbol so that I can write down an algebraic expression that has some uh, concrete meaning uh, of some mass and some radius r rotates with a period of this many seconds. Um, yeah, let me label it as t for now. But uh, what I'm going to soon do as I plug in numbers, I'm going to relate this uh, period of rotation with um, the frequency of rotation. And what I'm going to relate that frequency of rotation with is eventually um, the angular velocity or angular frequency because a lot of the rotational formulas are given in terms of angular frequency so you really want to express these given quantities in terms of angular frequency now it asks what is its rotational kinetic energy and this is a, one of those settings where you kind of have to know a particular formula. Um, and I guess one formula, you, you, I encourage you to recall by reliance on the um, analogy between translational motion and rotational motion is this one, that rotational kinetic energy is given by one half times the rotational version of mass or inertia or the moment of inertia or rotational inertia often illustrated with the letter i times the rotational version of velocity or speed or angular velocity squared and um, and that's the expression for rotational kinetic energy and this omega is what i'm getting at here i'm going to get a value of omega from this given period now this is what I'm referring to as a formula that you just have to know, the rotational inertia. It's something that depends on the shape of the body. So if you look at the hint here, says it says, um, treat the neutron star as a sphere of uniform density, which may or may not be true, but that's kind of a necessary thing so that you can get some handle on what this uh, rotational inertia is. And you might have this memorized. I think I have this memorized as 2 fifth mr squared. And, um, and if you have it memorized for sphere, that's great. Um, if not, never fear. It's one of those formulas that you are expected to look up. And if uh, we had any in-person exam or whatnot, this is one of those rare set of formulas that I'll would give to you so that you don't have to worry about memorizing it. So let me uh, show you where you can look it up. So when you go to University Physics, Volume 1, then um, then it's in the rotation chapter. If you go to the, let's see here, uh, I think it's a fixed axis rotation. Yeah, moment of inertia and rotational kinetic energy. And if you just uh, scroll down to, there should be a table somewhere that lists rotational inertia for a few common uh, shapes. And um, I do want you to learn how to derive some of these uh, through integration. But a sphere would be one of those that I wouldn't ask you to because it's a three-dimensional shape. It, um, so for this class, the only shape where I want you to know how to do it um, kind of on your own is the one dimensional shape like rod, uh, maybe of a non uniform density. So if I scroll down to sphere here, okay, yeah, solid sphere about any diameter, so any axis that's going through the uh, center, the rotational inertia is 2 mr squared over 5. That's what I memorized. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so this is the solid sphere. This is for spherical shell. And we don't have spherical shell, we have solid sphere. So so yeah, I'm just gonna use that formula um, uh, that I can look up on this table, uh, figure 10.20 in, uh, in your textbook. So uh, let me just plug in those numbers. And uh, I'm gonna convert my units as I plug in the numbers because um, yeah, so 
Oh, uh, let me just write out some of the intermediate expressions. So for my omega, um, uh, relying on these set of relationships, my omega should be um, um, 2 pi divided by the period. Uh, if you need to pause the video here, <laughs> double check that that is the correct uh, relationship between omega and period. And um, yeah, let me just plug in the numbers. My rotational kinetic energy is one half times the rotational inertia, which will be two fifth times the mass, two times 10 to the power of uh, 30 kilogram. Kilogram is already base gas I unit times the radius. Um, so 10.5 kilometers should be put in as 10.5 times 10 to the power of 3 meters. Meter is the basic SI unit and squared. Um, yeah, make sure that this looks as expected. Um, so that's I uh, times omega. Uh, I'm going to need the parenthesis here. Open parenthesis 2 times pi divided by the period 0 0.017 seconds. Um, parenthesis closed, squared. And I think there's a square thing out there. Okay, um, I think that's everything. Let me type in equals. I get the huge number, 6.02 times 10 to the 42. Oh, 10 to the 42. Okay, that matches. Great. Uh, so I just need to put in 6.02. Um, I, I think uh, it's okay that this uh, astronomical number doesn't make intuitive sense. That's kind of the definition of astronomical. Um, but I think these numbers are realistic numbers for neutron star. Neutron star is this small and they, tip, they can rotate this fast. It's uh, kind of one of the <laughs> amazing things about some of the products of the end stage of the sterile life cycle. But anyways, so for the purpose of our class, it's a relatively simple formula number plugging exercise to formulas, but you do have to know what formulas to plug in numbers to. Uh, and uh, this one for sphere, if you have to look it up, that's perfectly fine. Um, you just have to know where to look it up.